Yeah, so my name is Autumn Rooney. I'm with the Echo Park Time Bank. Uh, we're based in Echo Park and 12 other surrounding neighborhoods. Um, and uh, I'm just going to give a little overview of what time banking is and how it works, and then show you a little bit of our software that's made by Time Banks USA, um, which is based in Washington, D.C. They created the software called Community Weaver. And we recently upgraded to Community Weaver 2.0, so we're all kind of adjusting and getting used to Drupal. Um, it wasn't open source before now, so we're excited to present it to you guys and maybe get some feedback from you and ideas and suggestions on how to improve it. Um, so the elevator speech to start with, um, it's kind of an abstract concept. Um, is It's a mutual credit system, so everyone trades services with each other. Um, so if I give you a haircut, you give me a time credit, and I can spend that time credit on anybody else in the network to either fix my bike or teach me Spanish, cook me a gourmet meal, whatever is being offered. So a lot of people think that it's like bartering, but it's not I help you, you help me directly, because oftentimes maybe somebody doesn't have any skill that you want to give back. So it's a pay it forward system opens up so many more possibilities. So um, we started in March of 2008. We now have 300 members, but we just um, blended under one software system with our sister time bank, the Arroyo Time Bank in Pasadena, Highland Park. Um, so we're actually 600 members now. And so that's a lot of services. There's all kinds of things like uh, help with accounting, tutoring, like I said, gourmet meals, car repair. Um, Arroyo has some doctors, dentists. Um, massage therapists, acupuncturists, um, lots of gardeners, it just goes on and on, so pretty much anything you need is available. Um, so the one rule in time making is that one hour equals one time credit, so everyone is valued the same. So it doesn't matter if you're a teacher or a doctor, everyone is equal, so it totally levels the playing field. And in time banking, we uh, are working with an economy that we call the core economy, or the caring economy. And 40% of productive labor happens outside the cash economy. And it's all the labor that goes into caring for children, keeping neighborhoods safe, keeping the planet sustainable, fighting for social justice, occupying city hall. All of this important underlying oper operating system that our society depends on um, that as often goes unpaid. So time banking is designed to honor and reward that kind of labor. So um, also we try to um, practice reciprocity, where the idea of one-way charity is not as effective as enlisting the people that you're helping um, in what we call co-production. Time banking was started in the late 80s by a civil rights lawyer named Edgar Kahn. Um, and he had a program for the government called Volunteer Lawyers for the Poor. Um, and he was helping people in low-income housing with legal issues. Um, and he had helped thousands and thousands of families over the years. And when Reagan was threatening to cut the funding, he um, went to all these families and asked for their support to try to rally to save the program. And nobody showed up. So he said, no more free services and started invoicing the families to give back in community service. And so they went around to the churches and the youth groups and um, started tutoring programs and graffiti removal programs, playground cleanups. And um, people started to see the neighborhood improve, starting to see the neighborhood becoming more safe and felt more invested in the program. So the next time that the um, Edgar's program, Volunteer Lawyers for the Poor, the funding was going to be cut. All those families showed up at City Hall and said, don't take our law school. So it, it took empowering the people that this law school is helping to make them feel more invested in it. And that's a really important point with time banking is that it's reciprocity. We want to, um, instead of asking, how can I help you, we ask, how can we help each other make the world we both want to live in? So, um, uh, I have a few stories. Yeah? Do you guys know uh, how many bank hours that you have so far? 
like, I mean, I guess as a currency, you really measure an economy, GDP, or some type of number like that. Can you, like, point to, like, 1,725 hours of currency in exchange? Yeah, it's all documented on Community Weaver. Okay. We can calculate how many hours people have traded over the course of the past few years. I think we last year we um, exchanged about 3,000 time bank hours. So it's hard to put a dollar amount on that, like how much money was saved, because there's so many different types of services that are paid different amounts. But it's substantial, even at minimum wage. So it can help people save money, but mostly what comes out of it that's the most powerful are the relationships that are built and a sense of security that people are starting to feel. We've been going for about four years now and it's starting to feel like a family and I, you know, you start to see, feel this sense of trust that the cash economy doesn't foster. <laughs> so that's what is extra special about time banking. How do you get started? How did we get started with our time bank, or how does one get started? How does someone else, like a new person, get into time banking? Okay, yes, how does the, someone start a time bank? The way we started was through um, the organization Time Banks USA that made our software, Community Weaver. And um, we got a startup kit. You could try it out for about three months. No, um, suppose you already have, you know, 80 members or 100 members who have time, and now a new person comes. Wants to join. So, is going to offer or is going to oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, well, everybody starts with a bank account with zero in it. And you can go negative or positive. But we don't like to use these words negative, positive, debt, because it, people have tension around it and they get uncomfortable. But in the time bank, it's okay to go negative. It's okay to go in debt. And that's one of the toughest <coughs> paradigm shifts that we try to impart. <laughs> Um, because it kind of, our biggest problem is that people are posting more offers than requests because they want to give and they don't want to go in debt. But you can't have a whole economy just of givers. So we're trying to teach, re teach people how to receive. So, I know it's a tough So, yeah. Um, so Edgar Kahn expresses it like this. It, it's a... Uh, the depth of your debt, you know, it's a good thing. So the depth of your debt is a measure of how, of your commitment to building relationships in the community, building community. It's all about building community. And so it's good to go into debt because that builds, you're, you're spending more hours into the community. So people can spend those hours now. I can earn hours. And so the original uh, creator of those hours, you know, yeah, they're of debt, but, but they're creating community by doing it. So it's a positive thing. Yeah, and it's also, you, know, you can't really liken it to real money, because there's only a limited supply of real money to go around. So there's a sense of scarcity around it, that we have to hoard it and hide it and not spread it out. Um, whereas in time banking, we have an unlimited supply of hours every day, and each hour is an opportunity to give or receive. So it's just opens up so many possibilities and makes you really see that everything we need is all our resources are right around us. There's no reason for anybody to go without. It's just that we have these scarce pieces of paper that we use to make exchange. So that doesn't mean we can't negotiate with each other and get our needs met collectively. Um, I understand it from a services perspective, but how about well, time banking is mostly for services. It works best for that because we're working with hours, but people have traded stuff. Um, mostly we have a lot of swaps. People just bring all their stuff to one spot or to potluck or something um, and trade. And then you can just negotiate with the person and say, you know, this computer is worth five time credits or whatever you feel is comfortable. Or, you know, this piece of food is worth one time credit. You can just add value as you like. So you can do that, but. Um, uh, I feel like that in terms of stuff, there might be a separate kind of currency we can use for that, maybe a paper currency or something, because in time banking we want to um, get rid of price, because that's what divides people and creates the hierarchy. You know, So we don't want to be putting price back into our time. We want everyone to be equal. So that's why it gets tricky with items and stuff. But 
doesn't mean we can't do it. We can get creative. And like you mentioned, like at Gourmet Meal, I can understand the cooking being the service with the food. So when I buy the food, the food Yeah, if there's things like ingredients, if you're trading for a meal, um, you would pay for the ingredients and then pay the person for their time to cook it. Or if somebody's making you a dress, you buy the fabric. So. Another thing I think is kind of interesting, I don't know if this is just the Echo Park I make or the other ones do this, but there are a lot of nonprofits involved and they pay their volunteers with time dollars. And I think it's kind of cool because instead of um, banks or governments printing money, it's like Inside this little economy, the nonprofit organizations are kind of printing money. Like they're generating liquidity in the system. And it, it, to me, it just seems cool that individuals and nonprofits are the ones that are able to kind of control the, the value of the system. Yeah, we have a lot of organizations as members, and they appreciate the volunteer force. <laughs> And we appreciate being able to use their space if we're having a potluck, because the group events are an important way that people start building the trust and getting to know each other. So it's really a participatory thing. You can't, it's not like Facebook where you just set up your profile and you're done. you got to like go to the meetings and meet people. <laughs> a lot of people think it's just a social network in that sense, but um, it really involves a lot more. I, I want to point out one of the things that I find fascinating about about not just the software but about the culture of of a time bank, and that's that it's okay if people don't do everything through the website because the goal is to promote trust and to create community. And if if uh, uh, a, a venture back startup was saying, okay, we're going to build a social network and we're going to have profiles, we're going to have offers and and are going to post those, and then people are going to redeem points for the offers, and then, uh, but they have to do everything through the website. This is a totally different paradigm, and I think it's, it's really refreshing that, yeah, this this technology is being used to facilitate this, but the, the goal for success is to create community, not drive every single thing through a point-based system using Drupal modules that have been installed in I find that uh, fascinating. I should say it has helped a lot in the early days before computers. People were doing this, but they had to have one coordinator managing everything. You go talk to the person, they write it down in a ledger book. They actually had a let system at the LA Eco Village back in the 80s. And um, I saw their little catalog. They had to make um, periodically make catalogs with all the offers and requests for people to find each other. So it was way more labor intensive. So this is wonderful. It kind of manages itself. Everybody's got their own bank account that they handle. They post their own offers and requests. But at the same time, if somebody doesn't come and socialize with everybody, they usually end up not using it because they don't know who they are. You know, <laughs> these kind of strangers. But it's kind of a weird system because we're kind of trying to encourage strangers to just start trusting each other and becoming friends and treating each other like family. So that's it's incredible it works at all. <laughs> we need the, we need this technology, and we also need uh, you know organizing. What kind of challenges did you run into with people's behavior, and how did you address them? Technology. Did people behave badly, or did everybody behave wonderfully? Pretty much everybody behaves wonderfully. It's it's when we first started, I thought people were going to try to cheat the system or take advantage because it's based on generosity, but it's been overwhelmingly beneficial. We have hardly had any problems. So, I mean, our biggest problem is that people have a hard time receiving. So. What about um, uh, safety? Do people ever feel unsafe because they would have to feed the person in order to do the Um. Yeah, sometimes when they first join and they don't know anybody, and that's why, again, the mixers are kind of crucial because you can meet people in a setting with a lot of people that's safe and um, get to know them slowly but surely and and then you realize that pe in general most people are really safe and giving and the fear is unfounded. Can you talk a little bit about um, what I've 
changing? Yeah, well, um, I forgot to tell the story of how we started the time bank because that's <laughs> went back when I didn't believe it could work. Um, the way I found out about it was through my friend Lisa Gerstein, who heard about it on NPR, on Jerry Haddon's story on the world. And there was a story about a time bank in Barcelona, Spain. It's like 50,000 members or something. It's huge. And um, she was, got really inspired and couldn't find any more information about it. Um, and then a couple months later, it was my birthday, and we got together and um, with a mutual friend who had just taken a permaculture class. And he had just studied alternative currency in the class, so we started a big conversation about whether or not a time bank could work in Los Angeles. At the time, I was a bookkeeper, and every day people were coming to me asking me for their check. So I thought money was just what everybody wanted. That was my life. Like, your check's coming next week. Um, so I was like, there's no way something like a time bank would work in this city. <laughs> and I fought with them until 3 in the morning because um, I believed it was possible. <clears throat> but then I went home and looked up Time Banks USA and read the facts page and saw what it was about, and I immediately got the startup kit, and not realizing it would be 600 people four years later. But um, but I called my friends the next day and said, okay, we have a time bank. We just need the people. And they're like, what the happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> but now over the years, I've just seen... So many people come to me and say the time bank helped me so much. Like I w couldn't have been able to do this project. I couldn't have been able to do this without the time bank. And it's just remarkable how much we have everything we need. There's just no reason to go without in this world. My stress levels. Okay. <laughs> Well, the past couple of years I've been bartering childcare for rent, so I haven't had to um, get a day job, and I've been devoting myself entirely to the time bank, and that's uh, fueling me. <laughs> it feels good, because you can see all the people being helped, and um, not having a day job has been way more relaxing, and having less money has been relaxing. I didn't think it would be <laughs> better, but I just don't have to stress so much. But you must have a lot of hours. Oh, yeah, I'm rich. So you're teaching people how to receive. <laughs> I have more than I can spend. But I can get a massage whenever I want. <laughs> How's that feel? Yeah. Great. So I guess I'll show you guys Community Weaver if you want to see how it works, to give you a better idea of how it works. Um, I'm surrounded by technology. Uh, it's kind of big. Anyway, this is the home page, and there's a calendar. They, like I said, the events are kind of important, so we always keep... Would you like going. to uh, use this to... Oh, is this yeah, that would be cool. You can really oh, I'll just sit down here, and that's fine. Okay. Then I'll get this out. Thanks. This projector's hot. This is our Johnny Five. Wow, that's cool. It's like a robot. Um, so anyway, there's a home page, and you can see the events that are coming up and announcements and whatnot. And it's just like a welcome page. Um, like I said, we're two time banks, so we put both our logos up there. Um, but combined, we're called Arroyo Seco. That's going to be the name of our future nonprofit when we get all the bylaws done <laughs> that David's been working on. Um, and so if you want to see all the services, you click on Give and Receive. And that's kind of our marketplace. Um, so here you can search by category if you're looking for something specific. Um, and there's all kinds of different things. Um, my favorite is uh, um, Fight for Social Justice. I've earned time credits for protesting. And we have a profile for... Um, Occupy LA, so a lot of people earn time credits going down there. Um, so, but you can also browse by all requests or all offers, or search by member. If you met somebody at a potluck and you're like, oh, I remember that person was doing massage or something, you can find them that way too. Um, so, there's lots of different ways to um, search. Um, here's all members. 
So everyone has their own profile. It's kind of like Facebook meets Craigslist, sort of. Um, so you can get to your profile by clicking on My Account. And then people can contact each other through um, by sending a message here, and it, you have your own inbox, and a little notification goes into your personal email saying, get a message from so-and-so in the time bank. Um, or now, thanks to Chris Stefano, uh, we all have personal emails and phone numbers, which were hidden before. So I have. Oh, it's hard. Yeah. Um, suddenly, I got time, time dollars in my account. I'm like, Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll pay you good. double for that because that's. I got this email notification saying you were just involved in a transaction. I'm like, I guess I was. <laughs> you didn't even know it. Anyway, that was extremely valuable because people were like, I can't reach so and so. And so they were calling me. You know, do you have so and so's phone number? And I'm like, I can't do this all the time. <laughs> so that's great. Um, Access questions because I'm doing something, have similar issues, uh, not just being arbitrary. Um, so people sometimes get concerned when their information is made public. How are you, are you engaging with the Um, nobody's really been concerned. Well, what's the general public can't access this? Oh, it's two members only. I mean, there's 600 members, but. There's an application process we'll be before, before you uh, have access to this information. And when you create an account, you can opt to provide contact information, which is kind of the point, because you want other members of the community to be able to contact you. Well, sometimes, you know, uh, filtering my screen is only allow my friends or people that I somehow flag. Uh, and I wonder if you've done uh, No. Well, like I said, we're all new to Drupal, so that's why we're presenting to you now if you have a idea or feature some way to do that, we'd probably consider that. Yeah, our application process, we have a two, every time makes different, you guys may do something else, but um, we have two page application form. And then we ask for two references if you don't already know somebody in the time bank. If you already know somebody, then it's fine. Um, and we don't always call the references. <laughs> Um, and some time banks do background checks, but that's an expense that we can't afford because um, we're volunteer run. So, but we just haven't had any safety problems. So. Do you have a requirement for orientation? Oh yeah, now we have an orientation. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I forgot that part. Because um, there's, um, you can register for the time bank, but you're not activated until you come to the orientation. So. And a lot of people just can't get to the orientation. Like, we'd be twice the size, probably, if we activated everybody right away, which we were doing in the early days. So this kind of keeps it small and more intimate, which is, you know, that's a whole other subject, is like, when is the tipping point, and when does it become too big where it's not? personal, it starts becoming anonymous, and you don't know, know who your neighbors are, or, you know, and in L.A., that's been challenging because everybody's excited about the idea of living local and <laughs> knowing their neighbors, but we can't figure out what local is because, you know, does it stretch to Whittier, or Long Beach, or, you know, <laughs> so um, luckily there's more and more time banks popping up around the city, so ideally we would have one in each neighborhood with its own steering committee with its own potlucks, with its own community. Um, but right now, there's not enough, so we're kind of getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> so to start a new node, is it all explained right there in the community weaver or timenet.org? Just anybody can start one. Um, yeah, through Time Banks USA, they can give you the access to your own time bank. They give you the name and the, the time bank itself, I guess, node. Um, so is there, is, maybe you can explain that. <laughs> so is there, a, is there like a, somebody collecting a startup cost in it, or is it like pretty much free from, from the get-go? 
Yeah, Time Banks USA has a membership fee um, that's based on how many members you have. So you pay more the bigger you get. Um, but it's really reasonable. And our, we got that startup kit for like 50 bucks. So you can start pretty easily. And now they're making, because we're in Drupal, um, it's going to be open source. So um, people will be able to develop the code and access it. So uh, I, I heard uh, two separate questions. Maybe, maybe there are more. But the first one was, uh, as a member, when you're on the site, how do you use the site? Is that what you were wondering about, about creating a node? No, but I, mean, I mean about creating a new local. You know, a new town. A new neighborhood. Got it. Yep. So uh, I can answer that one. Uh, I've, I've been on the server. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, I've been on the server. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been on the, uh, the Time Banks USA uh, server and it's running a multi site configuration. There are 300 <coughs> some Time Banks that are all running uh, the same platform called Community Weaver 2. Community Weaver 1 was a separate platform written uh, as a separate uh, code base. Community Weaver 2 is what we see here, and so it's a traditional Drupal multi site. And I'm not familiar with the process of starting a time bank, and that's what you did. Uh, but conceivably, if you are uh, an upstanding member in your local community, you can say, I, I want to create a time bank, and, and you talk with, with time banks, you would say, to do that. Um, yeah, they mail you a manual and like all this other, they give you a lot of really good information on the community organizing aspect of it as well as the software. So it's not just software that they provide. Um, but that's a great way to start. Are they hosting this then? Yeah. Yep. So I, I don't know where it's hosted, but yeah, Time Banks USA uh, manages time, uh, uh, Community Weaver 2 as a software as a service platform. And there's been a lot of confusion around, is this open source? Uh, it's Drupal, which is open source. Uh, how do I get, how do I, how do I develop my own features for this? And that's been a, a difficult process for some time banks. Um, but that's being, that's being resolved, uh, hopefully this week. Yeah, they <clears throat> made this, I was going to show you guys the action hub, which where they're hoping developers will go to contribute and help work on Community Weaver, and that's where they're going to be putting the code. And you can also, um, there's discussions and work groups and different ways you can communicate with other people all over the world <coughs> on time banking. So, um, um, I'm in Eagle Rock, just biking distance from uh, Highland Park, which is part of Arroyo Seco, right? Yeah, the Arroyo Time Bank, which David's uh, in. So, um, would you recommend I try to get Eagle Rock to join the existing time bank or start its own. Or? Oh, that's in our zone. I think Eagle Rock's. I think the yeah. crucial thing is you want to be local to other members because you're not going to drive across town to exchange a loaf of bread. Um, so you want people nearby. Yeah. But, but Eagle Rock is relatively not nearby. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's easier to join a time bank than to start with us. Yeah, I think long and hard about starting one because it can take over your life <laughs> in a good way. But <laughs> so let's let's see how the site can be used. Uh, oh yeah, you guys ready for a demo? <clears throat> oh, I kind of show a little bit. Anyway, this is your um, bank account. Uh, it shows your balance and your debits and credits and all the exchanges you've had, <clears throat> uh, what you've earned and spent, and I only have seven seventy-five left. Um, then when people send you messages, um, they go in your inbox here. And you also, like I said, they get a notification in your regular email. Um, so if somebody wants to use your service, you got to check that out and communicate there. Um, then we ask everybody to put um, offers and requests when they first join. So your ads, when you create one here, um, it'll go in our marketplace. So you have to select, select a category and it's all sortable. Um, and what else? Uh, if you want to post a service ad, oh, here we can do a record and exchange. 
I can take some money out of the Echo Park Time Bank account. We have a profile that's called the Echo Park Time Bank account that we use to pay people who help us with serving on our care committee or steering committee or just like planning events or all the work that goes into running it. It's all paid through time credits. <clears throat> so we use that profile. That's like our community pot. And right now it's about negative 2,000 time credits. So that is, that's okay. Settling <laughs> software to uh, a community group count as a, as a bankable hour. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. Um, what do we got here? Business, sir. I think technology is under here. Yeah, computer support. Um, so I'll pay Chris Stefano some time credits for organizing this as an example. So. <laughs> like what? I'm rich. Um, so he's no, I'm the recipient of service. Sorry. Provider of service, Chris Stefano. Organized banking. Do I get a time dollar from all the attendees, too? <laughs> oh, no, that's <laughs> No, because one hour equals one time credit. So when we do things like classes or group events, we use that communal pot again. So all the students pay into that, and the teacher pays himself out of that. So the teacher doesn't get like, a ton of credits. That's how we've worked the classes. Um, how many hours did you spend organizing this? I'm, I'm ashamed to say. Oh, cool. But, but I'm, I'm only one of the organizers, so. Oh, well, they'll have to join. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> then you, so um, if somebody, if you do a service for somebody and they forget to pay you, you can just take it out of their account. So it's totally transparent. So I, I'll, I'll receive an email now saying that there was a, a recorded transaction. And uh, do you also get an email? Yeah. And then when I look at my account, it'll be debited or credited, debited. What, what happens if there's a disagreement? Um, well, now we've started organizing a facilitation committee for things like that. It doesn't happen that often. Um, but we really try to encourage people to have very clear communication. That's one of the things we cover in the orientation is just be totally upfront and clear about what, is expected to have the expectations clear. And also, um, if you're offering something like um, electrical work and you're amateur at it, you're not a professional, please let the person you're helping know that. Tell me there's not a story behind that. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well, see, we really enforce that. Like, please communicate. communicate. And that's one of the great things about the time bank that is we're all learning to communicate again because, you know, the money system kind of discourages us from communicating. When there's a conflict, we can usually just throw money at it and walk away and not have to deal with it. But in the time bank, your reputation is currency. So if you do something kind of crummy to somebody, it gets around the hood pretty quick. <laughs> that everybody knows each other, so that's sort of like our eBay rating system is, did you hear what so-and-so did? You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it pays to have a good reputation and to be giving and, and clear. So, I don't know, are there any other questions? Okay. So you mentioned individuals and nonprofits and businesses join the time mm-hmm Yeah. The, um, Oh, she asked if businesses can join the time bank, and um, we, I think we only have one for-profit business. Do you guys have any businesses in Arroyo? I can't think of any. Not a lot have joined so far, so we don't have experience with that yet, but they're welcome to join. Um, but that's another thing that I feel like uh, paper currency would be helpful, and um, I know one of the Arroyo Time Bank members, Q, had an idea to support the small local businesses now that we have 600 members we have like a collective purchasing power 
that we could direct at one small business that we want to support and all show up there in one day and shop and throw all our money on that business um, and like do that strategically to help the local businesses. A cash mob. A cash mob. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> Sorry. Is there any kind of dialogue or interest that would interface with credit unions? Oh, yeah, it would be great to start one. We did have lunch with uh, Pasadena Federal Credit Union, and we really haven't gotten past really into your comment. It's a great idea, and that was kind of why we sat down together. Um, so it hasn't gone anywhere yet, but it, yes. Like they were interested in educating people about economy from a money perspective, and we were kind of interested in well, how can we educate them from a time bank perspective, right. and kind of so like there was a little cross purposes there, right. but but I think we just never got around to working. Right. It, it really is part of a much larger conversation that's really happening. It needs to happen on every level. Um, the first step in the people are from banks, and the first step is actually becoming the banks or producing our own yeah. currency, we're issuing our own currency, we're not we're borrowing the it from the Fed, we're not borrowing yeah. it from the commercial bank, right? We're creating it. We are the wealth. Right. And we, once, we, once, we, once we fully take control of that on our own individual level, then the whole game is going to be over. There's also a lot of experiments with um, like Kickstarter and crowdfunding kind of things. We did a project called Artist Bailout because I used to be an artist, and there were so many artists who are, need funding for projects. So we had a big banquet dinner, charged $10 at the door, and um, had like three or four artists do a presentation for a project they needed funding for. And then everybody filled out ballots and voted on who should get the pot that we collected at the door. So it was like a little micro-grant. So, I, you know, there's lots of creative ways we can keep what little wealth we have left circulating in the community rather than floating out. So how does it work with a nonprofit um, uh, joining this? I mean, I, I work at a nonprofit, I can definitely see us getting the benefit out of giving away time and giving you ability to use debt. Like, how do nonprofits pay that, that back? Uh, a lot of them just go into debt. Sometimes the time bank account gives like a scholarship or a a donation. We um, set up an account called the Nonprofit Fund. So if somebody wants to help a nonprofit that's not a member, they can pay themselves out of that account. And a lot of times, um, nonprofits offer us space, which is we need space constantly. We're always doing programming and needing a spot. So they can earn that way. Um, but you know, the nonprofits are already, already contributing to the community by nature of what they do. So if the accounting doesn't work out, we know there's still a benefit to the community and the debt. You can overlook the debt. You know. I actually have so many hours in every month that I tithe to pay a non-profit. Oh, I good. John is a time bank philanthropist. It's great. Yeah, you're always at 826 LA, right? <laughs> Tutoring center. I think I would just add on to that. Just, uh, you know, it's hard to get away from that debt concept, but we can't charge interest on time, and so there's no interest charges. Uh, there's nobody looking down at any account saying, oh, that's bad, you're a negative. There's none of that. So, go into debt. Because you're building community. So it's a positive that comes out of this negative number. It's, a, it's just a, it's an art, the negative number is an abstract concept. And I know we're all programmed to be negative about it. Like, uh, it, it makes sense to me on, a, on an individual basis that's a little bit sometimes. You know, a few hours up, sometimes a few hours down, and it doesn't really make a difference. I'm just thinking, you know, with an organization like mine, I mean, we can be thousands and thousands of hours in the world. Well, there's no interest, and no right. one's looking at it, so no one cares. You're creating community relationships. And there's an unlimited supply of time dollars. It's not like we'll run out. Yeah. I 
Um, well, one of our members, Lee Conger, has gotten really into reporting stuff. There are reports. Um, if I log in as an admin, you can access that. Um, and it's amazing to see. I mean, it kind of fluctuates. I don't know if there's an average of how many per day happen because when we have a big event or the garden group does something, there's a flurry of exchange. There's a whole bunch. And then sometimes there's a dry spell and nothing's going on. Everybody's on vacation or something. Um, but I, I don't know how to average that. But you can see reports in this control panel when you're an admin. And um, one of our members has been quantifying all the different, like we, our members gave this many time credits to nonprofits. Our members did this many gardening hours. Our members did this much education time. So it's amazing to see when that categorized. <laughs> um, uh, I haven't done a lot. I wish Lee was here because I haven't done a lot of the reports. <laughs> anyway, this control panel is kind of still new to me. I'm working on it. Um, but you can export it into Excel or CBS or something. And, um, member activity summary, CSV. <laughs> can you tell I'm low tech? Um, yeah, so you can make reports. Um, and this is where we activate people. These are all people waiting to be activated. We haven't read their application. We do application reviews every month. So after we do that and they're all approved, then we activate them and they're able to log in and post offers and requests and start trading. Um, yeah, so you can see members' balances, how much they've traded, and then um, we do a newsletter every month, and we have a member of the month, and you know, announce when somebody's doing a lot of exchanges. We want to encourage that. So, um. I guess I'm just curious as you know, how maybe how much of a spike occurred when the merger happened to the appendix. I think just could be a lot of data. I think things kind of slowed down when the upgrade happened because people are adjusting and getting used to the new software. This big learning curve right now, like, I used to be able to do this, I used to be able to do that. You know? <laughs> um, so change is tough sometimes, but um, I think it's good. So um, I wanted to say that from a technical uh, standpoint, that this website that we're looking at, it is built with all <laughs> off-the-shelf parts. There's almost no custom code written to to develop and to run this website. Uh, what we're looking at here are views and <coughs> panels, and there's a there's a module for tracking uh, uh, transactions, a point-based transaction between members called Mutual Credit, uh, written by uh, a member of the Time Banking Group on Group Central.org named Matthew something. Do you remember his, his, his name? Matthew. Yeah. Matthew something. And so his last name starts with S. And it, it, it's all on the shelf parts. Everything you see here was built by taking different modules from Drupal.org and sandwiching them together and configure it's all configuration. This is all point and click configuration. It, it's an astonishing achievement, not only in what the developers did when they built the site, but it's an astonishing achievement in what Drupal itself can do. And uh, there, there is uh, design and theming uh, for, for, the, for the layout, but uh, the actual functionality was all done with off-the-shelf contributed modules that you can get for free. And it, it, it makes a developer like myself uh, really relieved because I can go in and I can, I can make changes, I can add new features with, without worrying about a lot of custom code and a lot of technical debt. There are some things that, that I'm not familiar with in, in how the site was built, but it, it's this is a it's 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 a dream. It's a dream come true. Uh, Drupal really made this possible. So on the server, you have access to their multi-site folder. 
So. No, no, but but I, I I've seen the uh, the directory listings and it's a multi-site configuration. Uh, we were given FTP access, which you can apply for, and those those directories that you are given access to uh, are a module and theme uh, subdirectories for adding your own stuff. So we added a module called Inactive User, which for Drupal six will contact members after they haven't logged in for a while, and that actually will solve a need that you have, which is, what happens when people sign up and they don't come back? Well, we want to email them, and but we don't want to do it manually, so there's a module called Inactive User, just dropped it in there, it's ready to configure, and uh, we just need the, the wording from you, from, from Autumn, to... Uh, oh, I'm going to gonna pay you more time credits. Well, did you do that after I've done it? It took five minutes to get the module and drop it in there. Um, so uh, that's the next thing that, that we're going to do, is, is to uh, find a way for you to reach the people who signed up who haven't been active. And uh, so that's all uh, because, because the, the, the user account that I was given access to had uh, uh, the, the, the drop folder, had the modules and themes uh, uh, folders that I could, I could uh, install new code in. Did Which you say it was D6? It is. It's all, all Drupal 6. Uh, do you remember when, when Community Viewer 2 was delivered? I think October. It's brand new. October 2011? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to have code spreads to help you find it? Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, we can do that. So uh, one of the practices that we have in, in the LA Drupal community, but also in a lot of communities, including the Part Time Bank, is uh, the, the concept of barn raising. And I think that uh, um, I'm just gonna stay sitting down here and ask you to, to no, no? Okay, all right, so time, time, uh, time banking is, is a relatively new concept, but barn raising is an old concept. Barn raisings are where the community comes together for, as you mentioned, the cash flow. Uh, that, that's a, a form of, of uh, everyone showing up to benefit, uh, to, to show support for or one organization, or one family, or one individual. Uh, so we've done barn raisings here in the past at Drop Labs, as well as uh, all, all around Los Angeles for Drupal websites. Um, so that's something that we can do. We can create a training environment. As, you, as everyone can see, Drop Labs is configured right now in the shape of a classroom. So we can have a, a, um, a, a class-oriented uh, event where we get together we establish what the problems are that we need to solve, and then we train the people by having experts in our, in our field, like Drupal architects and developers, helping others do the tasks that you need done. And we learn how to teach better. Those who want to learn, learn how to do the things that, 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 you, need, that you need doing. And it's, it's, a, it's another form of exchange. And in the past, uh, in some communities, uh, like the Amish, but if you can show for a barn raising, you weren't allowed to be in that community anymore because it was expected. We don't we don't have that philosophy in LA Drupal. We don't have that philosophy here at Drop Labs, but we we do try to make it a valuable experience for everyone. So yes, we'll do a we'll do a code spread. We'll do a we'll do a barn raising. We'll just have to to put it on the calendar and figure out what needs to be done. And, Code Sprint. Code Sprint. Love yeah. it. I'm willing to organize it. All right. Yeah. Great. I originally volunteered to help with this before we organized it. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I should say uh, thank you. Um, Jim Tate, too, has been doing a lot of tech support for Time Banks USA, and I think he needs some help. It's just <laughs> there's a lot of people that are like, can you change this? If you can come on Thursday night here, I'll, I'll spend my entire time working on this if you want. Uh, but if not, I'll, I'll, I'll join the code sprint, of course, but I'm just offering that as an option, too, if there's any other Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Well, I, we have... Uh, a, Maybe another minute or two. Uh, does anybody have any more questions about community week or two, or about time banking? Uh, yeah, you mentioned that it was 
was open source, was going to be open source at this point, and I just was curious, I mean, something that I, I might be interested in looking at, and how, is it coming, is this already here, like what? Yeah, next week they said, um, look out on the Action Hub, actionhub.timebanks.org, and there's going to be, they said, places where developers can, like, document what they're doing and share and yeah, action hub. But it doesn't look like much right now. Right now it's not operating, but next week. <laughs> so so are, are the updates that you're making to your site, your community leader 2.0, do you, do you plan to give that to other communities as well? Or is it that another community would see something that you did, like this phone and email thing, and be like, hey, we want that, and, and, and you can then donate that back to them? Is that a concept that, that you're trying to do, use? Because it, it seems interesting that it's, it's the same, but it's separate, right? So their site's not going to get the changes or the bug fix that you worked out. How do you notify the other time banks around the United States that that happened? Um, we're hoping the Action Hub will be where that all happens. We have something posted on the Action Hub now. There's a, what, what we call a site administrators group, and we have some how-tos there for other time banks that have the ability to go in the background and change some of the prompt code. So that there are some instructions that we're sharing with other time banks. And, and right now, those are procedural. Those are recipes and, and steps to go through. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a developer and architect, one of, one of my hopes I can't say if it's a goal yet because I, I haven't talked with anybody other than Autumn. But one of, one of my hopes is that we can featureize these these features so that they can be shared en masse without needing um, the site administrator role and just landing in the cockpit with all the controls that views gives you, which can be um, it can be error prone, it can be confusing, it's a learning curve. Uh, if you just want to have phone numbers and email addresses being shown, that hopefully, again as a hope, it can be featureized using a, a group of logical features, and then it can be distributed as as a folder of configuration. It's just a folder of code, like a module, that's that's then distributed to the time makes it want it. And for that, it's possible that we need to do some refactoring, and, and we'll need to work with time banks who say to to create a policy. Uh, so again, it's just a hope. But it, it is technically possible to yeah, to revolutionize the distribution of features, and it's it, it's a dream too. Yeah. Yeah, Ben. Yeah. Since it's all just configuration and there are all the modules, would it be relatively, um, I don't want to say easy, but like uh, very possible to? I'm not a developer for Community Weaver or for Time Banks USA, so I can't I can't answer that. Uh, does anyone have an answer to that question of why this is in Drupal six? Yeah, um, I think Stephanie Rurick said they were going to upgrade it sometime soon to okay. seven. It's going to be quite hard this first challenge. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got to say that, that if uh, a client came to us today and asked us to build a site like this, we would probably do it in six. Because this is a one on application. It doesn't need an upgrade path to seven, in my opinion. Um, the support for the contrib modules, the support for uh, security updates, they're all there for Drupal 6. And um, there are far more people who know how to use Drupal 6 now than the group of seven. Um, as an aside, this week we hit a milestone where the number of Drupal seven installations finally surpassed Drupal six installations. And this is over a year after Drupal seven came out. It, it's a it's a milestone, but it, it's it's a reminder that not not that many more people are using Drupal seven now than Drupal six. There's a lot more institutionalized knowledge of how these six works. But I think it's important if you're going to be handing it off to a client or you're handing it off to a community of developers who may then need to reach out to people like us in Dropbox. Uh, doing a barn raising for Drupal 7 is going to be a lot harder 
than doing barn raising for a project based on proof of sales. Hopefully, you already touched on this. is made entirely out of troop modules configuring the refined, better, more reliable selection. Yeah. I looked at you know, Group of Seven for, for micro needs, and I've done it, but I wouldn't have to write a lot more code. I would have to deal with a lot of visibility based on Group of Seven. When did you start that project? Uh, five months ago. Does anyone have a, uh, one, one more? Can we plan for one more question? Anybody? Well, I'm a new Time Bank uh, member in Jim's Time Bank. And one particularly thing that uh, comes up right away is what are the services that I could benefit from? So it's not readily available to, to see it very easy yet in our version of, of Community Movement. But then the uh, aspect of the possibility of the time banks interacting with each other and trading services somehow within that interaction is very tantalizing. And uh, I think that's going to happen. So anybody start thinking of ways how to manage that monster is, is, is going to have a, a big help doing it. It'll make time banks happen much quicker. Can I, can, I, uh, can I drive for a second? I yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to follow up on, on, on your comment. And uh, so uh, last year, I started a project called Time Machine. Um, I wonder where I got that name. Yep, Apple beat me to that. Oh, here's Time Machine right there. So I started this project and spec'd out how I would build a site like Community Weaver. And... About a month after I, I did all that uh, all that that prep, I learned that there was actually something out there called Community Weaver that was based on Drupal. And so I've cooled my jets and I, I haven't begun any development on this and I, I would have used a different a different stack of, of modules and well, it would have had very similar features, but it would have been based on user points and not mutual credit and there are gonna be some some differences. But I decided to hold off because I didn't I didn't want to duplicate effort, which is one of the one of the, the principles that we have in our community, uh, one of the core principles. Uh, we want to collaborate, and when in doubt, consult others. You know, so there are all these different uh, 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 principles in our code of conduct. So I'm like, you know, I should really wait. And and so I'm, I'm glad that we finally had a chance to get together, and we, we've been meeting here at Drop Labs. But the scope for Time Machine has changed so that it actually does what you were talking about, which is connecting the different time banking websites so that there can be inter-time bank trade and exchange. And so that, that is relatively straightforward, especially, and this is, this is just, I'm positing as a developer because all things are possible if, you, if you're an engineer, considering that all of the time bank websites are on one server, on one MySQL server, sharing data, it's one database server uh, accessing all databases, it is theoretically possible to drop a module into your modules directory, which you can get if you get FTP access, and then turn on the module and then suddenly have inter-community trade. And so that, that's, that's, again, it's a goal, uh, but uh, no, no code has actually been written yet. So... Uh, the last thing that I wanted to do as a developer and as, a, as an architect is to come in and say, oh, all these things are possible and, and you're doing it wrong. Let me do it. Uh, that's, that's not my goal at all. Uh, I'm, I'm here to help you, Autumn, and to, to introduce time banking to our community as well as to introduce Drop Labs to your time banking community. And uh, I, I like to take things slow. So, so Time Machine has changed a bit in, uh, in scope. Uh, this this was started on October 5th, and I was doing research, and I found that you had just done a time banking conference the day before. Mm -hmm. And I was so upset because I, I really wanted to I really wanted to go to that. I just didn't know about it. And I found out, oh, Time Weaver, it's based on Drupal. Okay, so, so I just took my time, and I, I just waited. And uh, it turns out there's actually a time banking group for people who use Drupal that I also started. It's a discussion forum. If you go to groups.drupal.org, 
uh, slash time dash banking. Uh, let's open that up here for the the, the folks uh, watching at home. Drupal.org slash time dash banking. And this was before I even knew about Community Weaver being based on Drupal. So now now we, we highlight Community Weaver as being an example of how to do time banking with with this particular software. And uh, anyone can can join this group. Just create a create an account on, on Drupal.org and just surf over to this page and and when, once you're logged in, you can just join the group. And this is ideally where a lot of these uh, discussions will be, um, but in a more general sense about best practices, about uh, lessons learned, uh, about uh, uh, blue sky ideas that we want to implement. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled that there's the Action Hub because that's what a software project like this really needs whether it's Community Weaver or something else. It really needs a, a, a place for everyone to congregate and, and, and talk. So Jim, before you leave tonight, I want to talk with you about the different recipes and how-tos that you've been posting. And um, yeah, so you went all the way over there, but um, come on, sit up, sit up. Yeah, it is Yes, Sasha. I wanted to introduce one more element in the Venn diagram that has some overlapping Character, characteristics to it. There's something I was interested in before I get, got, came into the Drupal meetups. And that's a, it's just something it's not, I want to detract any way from anything we brought here that, but just something that has a common interest. It's called the Ripple Monetary System. I don't know if anybody here has heard of it before, but it's an open source software project. So that would kind of tie into transfers between individuals or between groups, but it happens on a global level. Ripple? Ripple. It's, it's a ripple source project or ripple-project.org is a wiki page. Or just look it up on the Wikipedia Ripple monetary system. Just for future reference and how you can see how immediately there, it has implications where it would tie into time banking. But as a currency exchange going across, that's a currency conversion. So it's like basically doing the, doing the infrastructure that happens between international banking, but on an open source software level, where it has nothing to take it all out of the hands of banks, it puts it all into peer to peer network. And and that's what you were saying earlier is that the members of the time bank are are the wealth. It, it, it's a, a revolution revolutionary concept. But only because we're so ingrained in how the, the the nationally backed currency system works. So there's Ripple. There's uh, OS currency, which uh, means uh, open source currency. There's Community Weaver one and two and possibly three. Uh, there are uh, there's Time Machine, which uh, hasn't been built yet. Uh, our world. Too. Our world is spelled H O U R. World. Yep. I don't even know. Uh, Bitcoin is different. That it, it is actually, what's that? Do you, do you want to answer that? Okay, so Bitcoin is different. Is that it actually is? A, uh, it's a cryptographically secure currency system that exists online. Uh, it has nothing to do with exchange of services through time, uh, but you can spend bitcoins for right. products and services. It's kind of currency rather than a system of exchange. Right, right, and. Uh, it's it's pretty much here to stay, I, I believe. Uh, it's had a lot, a lot a lot of upside ups and downs, but it's uh, it's it has enough backing that it's it's going to take off, and then collapse and then take off, and eventually it'll be up here. No different than any other. Yeah, right. So Autumn, thank you so much for coming.